gentlemen, Alan Titchmar. Stop, stop, it's too much. No, it's not, actually. Hello, welcome to Choosey's AT Show. Today, we've the most successful girl group of all time. the Spice Girls, more album sales than girls allowed, and they're still going strong 27 years after their first hit single, Bananarama, chat and perform an exclusive track from their brand new album. Uh, <coughs> now, when my next guests had their first hit back in 1982, they should have been on this feature really, shouldn't they? I bet neither of them thought they'd still be going strong 27 years later. They've achieved more than 40 million record sales had more hits than the Spice Girls, and are even in the Guinness Book of World Records for having more chart entries than any other girl band in history. Forget the Supremes, the Three Degrees, and Destiny's Child. There's only one. Bananarama. Welcome Karen Woodward and Sarah Dallin in Bananarama. <laughs> you can do stairs. <laughs> Welcome. We love Sarah. Karen, Karen, Karen loves Sarah. I love this. You know, they're still going strong, but they do have trouble with steps nowadays. <laughs> Oh, I've always been clumsy, horribly clumsy. What is it? Because you... Just remind us of your ages when you started singing together. Uh, oh. We were just 18, 19. We started 18, singing 19. together yeah. when we were about four, actually. Yeah, because we grew up together. <laughs> Most bands nowadays... I mean, you look if you get two years out of them before somebody says, I'm going to go off and do me acting, or they fall out and they have bus stops. What's kept you together? I think because we formed our own group, we went to school together and always kind of did uh, demos and things, but we formed our own group and wrote our own songs and styled ourselves, so I think, you know, everything came from us, which is why I think we've lasted so long. What do your children think now, though? I mean, do they say, will you stop doing that, mother, for goodness sake, come away? I, I think, well, I know with my son, he probably went through a period at, when he was at school where it was all a bit embarrassing, but... Um, He's, he's rather proud of me now. He comes to the shows and, and he's not embarrassed in Isn't his Isn't it scientists. interesting? You go through that stage, don't you? There's a kind of sound barrier, if you like, as a parent <laughs> that you have to get through. And at this side of the sound barrier, it's, oh, you're so embarrassing. Well, and then you get the other side and they get a bit older and it's kind of, oh, go it, girl. You know, yeah, so well, they you get gave Mr. Heyday, which was, you know, yeah. the 80s. My daughter wasn't born to the 90s, so she kind of always used to ask me, are you, were you ever as famous as the Spice Girls? I said, well, yeah, yes, I was, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so how old are your children now? Your uh, 17, Alice. 22. Oh, gosh, it's scary, isn't yeah, it? I, I know. guess it's exactly the same kind of thing. You were in a... Pete Waterman said, and it's no doubt keeps <laughs> coming back to it, you're the most <laughs> difficult group I've ever worked with. I mean, define difficult. Why did you think you were difficult? I think because we had our own ideas of how we wanted the music to sound and our own opinions, and I think... It was easier for them to just write songs and give them to the artist, I think, but that was never how we worked. You didn't do as you were told, basically. No, we have never okay been very good for guys to do, but not for girls. It always turned as difficult. <laughs> With guys, it's just rock and roll. It's yeah. the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. It, there's a different dynamic, I should think, to a girl band onto a completely to a boy band, isn't it? I mean, because they're famous for uh, open dressing rooms and all that. I mean, I, I, now without being personal and, and rude, but no, rock band guys have this reputation for where you know, 15 girls a night. I mean, is it the, is it the reverse with girl bands? Do you have to lock your dressing room door to keep men out, or is it an assumption that because you're a girl band, you're kind of where? I'd like to say we had. I didn't know I was going to ask that. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure that I've ever had to lock my dressing room door, which is sad, really. <laughs> <laughs> but this, the kind of music you did, as you say, was it was your kind. You, you knew exactly what you wanted to do. It seems to me that a lot of the songs sort of had a message. Going with um, early days, I think, after starting, we, um, because we were three girls and we felt we didn't want to be seen as just sort of frivolous bimbos, that uh, there were a lot of messages in the songs. And, um, and then you get past that and you think, well, I just really want to write great pop songs and they don't necessarily have to have a message. 
So, yeah, we were sort of adamant that people should take us seriously for a while. Was it, was it easy to get them to take you seriously or not? So. I think they give us um, credit now because we've lasted so long. And if anybody bothers to look back or research, they see that we have written all our own material. And I think that's, that, that, that was always a big thing for us. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a bit sad when sort of 20 years down the line people say to you, so have you thought about writing your own songs? Oh, so you just no. yeah. get slightly yeah. insulted. Yeah. About now, what does happen with writing, though, is very often when you, I mean, I, I write books rather than songs, you look back at your earliest work and you think, oh, it's not quite what it is. You, you have to perform your that. earliest <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's great then. So you're still happy with your early work. Is that okay? They, I, mean, I think they have the a certain charm, don't they? You yeah. realise how oh, I wrote that about going down the laundrette before I had my nice plush kitchen and things like <laughs> that. And you think, oh, that's quite sweet. But everything is relevant, you know, the period of time and being a teenager writing as to being you know, much older. It's more embarrassing having the fashion faux pas thrown oh, in your face yeah. on a regular basis. Yes, the, the width of things and the height of stuff yes. and, and all that. All the homemade clothes we yeah. wore. You had you, this, this new album that's come out, Viva. Yeah. Um, all old material or new material? Or? Um, a couple, we actually started with the idea of doing a covers um, album and then started writing and it got carried away with it all. The, and the record company that signed us decided they much preferred the stuff we'd written ourselves. So it's mm. mostly written by us. Yeah. There's a couple of covers, but... Do you have to pinch yourselves to look back at it? I mean, you know, you were living in a flat above one of the Sex Pistols, weren't you, way back? Because yeah. you had no money at all. I mean, come yeah. from the, the YWCA yeah, we where... We were, yes. Why did you get choked out the YWCA? Oh, keeping late hours, I think. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't allow any boys past the front gate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would never do. Not they had girl, all night man. patrols on the door. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of folk look back on their early years, oh, no, I don't want to remember that. You sort of, do you look, remember them fondly? Oh, absolutely. We met um, Paul Cook from the Sex Pistols and he offered us a place to live above his rehearsal room. And for us, us at school we were punks and so that was just like oh my god how fantastic we're just kind of living where they they <laughs> all used to crash. rehearse and things you're also doing something at the albert of the karen keating foundation yes. we are yes in um, november i think yes yeah. november we, the first, we yeah. did another show for um, the karen keating foundation yeah. which was fantastic and it's uh, women in rock and there's yeah. loads of people on the bill mel c's on it um bonnie Jamelia. tyler jamelia wow us. and it's uh, we're all doing evening. a few songs with a sort of 13 piece band it should be really good and you met robert de niro we did. Song about yes. him. What yeah. was he like? <laughs> he phoned us up in our council flat, and it was just <laughs> my boyfriend answered and said, uh, "Robert De Niro's on the phone." And we were watching Brookside, I think, and we were like, oh, "Yes, sure he is." Sure he is. <laughs> 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 what are the chances of that happening? So we just arranged to go out for a drink and got a little bit tipsy with him. And oh, you did go out for yeah, a drink with yeah, him? Yeah, so yeah. He yeah. really was Robert De Niro. Yes, yeah, he did. It yeah, it was really him on the phone. And did he? Because he's, he's famous for being rather. Well, was it was he? all right that night. <laughs> 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 and on that note, Conan and Sarah will be back later in the show to perform an exclusive track from their new album. But for now, my thanks to Robert De Niro and Banana Rama. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can't wait. See you next. Welcome back to Tuesday's AT Show. Still to come, calendar girl Jerry Hall reveals what it's like to take your clothes off in front of hundreds of people every night. We'll compare notes. But first... <laughs> but only notes. But first, we chatted to them earlier and now they're back with an exclusive track from their new album, Viva Bananarama, performing Love Don't Live Here, Bananarama! <laughs>
Ah, Banana Rama. Wonderful. They've told me I can audition for one of the dancing boys. <laughs> It'll be a short audition.